Practice makes perfect. You're already that person. You're already confident. Just tap into that. That, that aspect of yourself already exists within you. I'm not just a gamer. <laughs> I also do positivity grants, and I also love to cook, and I also love to explore, and I like to play in life. Shukran. Just made it to Dubai. Got my bag, waiting for an Uber. I haven't been vlogging too much, but we'll see. I'll vlog this week, I think. Uh, the flight was good. It was only three hours long. And now I'm gonna go and meet up with Denise. I'm gonna be staying with her and then go for sushi with Caitlin. My original gamer tag was Kitty Plays MC. That was the name that I used when I played Minecraft because it was Kitty Plays MC. And then I was gonna have like a Kitty Plays Starcraft and a Kitty Plays World of Warcraft and a Kitty Plays like that kind of thing. And so Kitty Plays Games was my original Twitch username. And the kitty came from, I liked cats. I mean, I love all animals, but I thought Kitty was a cute kind of gamer girl name when I was younger. And then the plays, I just made sense because that's what I was doing. And then I, I hyphened the games off. I mean, this happened early in my Twitch career, like two years in when I really felt like I was like, I'm not just a gamer. <laughs> and I wanted people to know that. I was like, I also do, Positivity rants, and I also love to cook, and I also love to explore, and I like to play in life. So I started to bring my stream through IRL streams and other forms of media uh, into the world to show to play in life. And I, I still get the comment, it's like, Kitty, well, I think this is really old, but like, why don't, why do you have plays in your name if you're not playing anymore? Because they're associating playing with games, and it's just, I want to reiterate for everybody that my highest form of respect for people are the people that I meet that are able to cultivate a sense of play in everything they do. And so there's like this bell curve of like playing and fun and then like seriousness and life and all this like stuff down here and then coming back up to playing and fun. And like, and it's like over time. So when we're young, we're connected to that. We're like, we see the power of play and like expression. When we get older and shit gets more serious. And then you see old people who are like the most silly, playful people ever. And you're like, I like old people and I like young people. What's all this serious shit in the middle? So like the earlier that I think we can realize the power of playing in life and not taking things so seriously, uh, the better. I'm saying all of this as someone that is very attracted to both men and with women and I've had experiences with both. I've got the best trick for this and this goes for everyone okay my mom when i was in grade eight and i was i changed schools a lot and she told me kristen if you want to create more friendships you need to fake it you need to act like you're confident look at whoever's confident in your life look at the people in your life and lately i've been looking at people who i'm jealous of in life and i've just been behaving like the aspects that are triggering in me and those people. Like if I'm jealous of something and I'm not able to like do it myself, I just fake it. And so all through middle school, I faked like I was confident. And then one day you just look at yourself and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm confident. And it's a practice over time. Like you don't get it all the way. Like, like the life is a practice. There's not gonna be one day you're like, I'm the most confident person in the world. So first of all, I would write down what you see confidence as being. So it's like, what are the qualities that make someone confident? Write all those things down and then start to just behave like that and ask yourself, like, what would Jesus do? No, what would a confident person do right now? And take that action, no matter how uncomfortable you feel, no matter how weird it feels, no matter uh, it feels, because the feeling, I've re recognized this lately, the pleasure of acting with confidence and stepping in with your power, it far outweighs the pain of rejection. And so understanding this kind of interplay of like, oh, I can show up for myself. Cause the only person you're ever gonna know in your whole life is yourself. I'm just like, 
I hate to break it to you, we're all in this alone. And the only person you're gonna know <laughs> is yourself. And so get to know yourself and learn to be someone that's gonna show up for yourself. Learn to be someone that if like everyone else rejects you, you're not gonna reject yourself and be that person. So write down, what does it look like to be confident? Oh, you know, they're standing tall. Oh, they have, like, they look calm in the room. And a lot of that just comes from breathing. Like, if you're feeling anxiety, like, you're probably holding your breath. So take some deep belly breaths and just, I like to switch my eyes from a focus perspective to a peripheral focus and just take in everything your eyes can see is like, and just hold that gaze that relaxes me. And I'm just like, wow, I'm really doing this human thing right now. Like sometimes it just comes in my head. I'm like, what? And I was like, wait, am I not a human? And then I have a little bit of a like multi-dimensional existential crisis. But then it comes, and then you just breathe, just breathe, just keep breathing. You're gonna be fine. And so just act as you're just confident. Just act as if. And you, I promise you, one day you're gonna look back and you're gonna be like, oh, I'm a confident motherfucker. Shit. Wow, is that me? Did I just do that? I did that? What? I would never have done that. Like that happens to me all the time. I'm like, I'm that bitch. I'm like, I did that. That's me now. And it comes over time. So write down those list of qualities and just work, do your best to just emulate them. Like how can you become and be that person even deeper? And then when it comes to women and being confident with women, women are scary. I don't blame you. Okay. Women are incredibly intuitive beautiful, we smell good, like we're nice to be around and it can feel intimidating. So I would say, uh, and my, my advice always is, is just learn to flirt with everybody. Like I am the biggest flirt. I flirt with my cat, I flirt with my dog, I flirt with Holly, I flirt with my boyfriend, I flirt with the gas attendant, I flirt with the lady checking me into my flight, and like she's older and she had a Czech accent, and I was like, is that a Czech accent? Where are you from? <laughs> Tell me about yourself. So flirt with everybody. The secret to human interactions is keep people talking about themselves. I have had conversations where I've only asked, I've been the only one that's asked questions, and the people walk away, they're like, wow, you know, this was a great conversation. <laughs> like, I love talking with you. And it's just because I'm listening and asking questions, which for a lot of people is really hard to come by. Like, we we don't, people forget what the art of active listening is, which is literally just listening. It's, it's, and being attentive and focused on that. So the art of active listening, asking questions, flirting with everyone, and recognizing that this is like my new mantra. My sister was actually on a flight with Ryan Reynolds yesterday and she didn't say hi to him. And I was like, <laughs> so what I'm trying to, my new mantra is like, and I'm not saying Ryan Reynolds is nervous, but like a lot of people like love talking to people, but they're just too nervous to break the ice. Most people, right? They're so focused on themselves. And so I like to, if I get a ping, and that's again, finding that heart, that voice in your heart. If I get a ping to compliment people or Every time I make eye contact with people, I smile. There's a lot of layers to this now. A lot of practices that I do. But if I get a ping to talk to someone, um, I always will, like without question now. And I just do it and it hurts. And my mom just, I'm doing a service to this person. They wanted to talk to me. <laughs> like, it's like, I'm doing a service by being the confident one right now. Whether or not that actually exists, but it's just this idea is like, I'm not doing this for me. I'm doing this for them because they would love to talk with me. And so it's like setting up the situation where it's like, what if this person loved, would want to talk to you? How would you treat your interaction with the person if they were actually excited to talk with you? You'd behave differently. You'd ask different questions. You'd act different. That was a long answer, but practice makes perfect. You're already that person. You're already confident. Just tap into that. That that aspect of yourself already exists within you. Made it to the airport. I'm flying with Emirates today to Istanbul. I realized that like the last time I did a horizontal video was in the airport when I got here. So I haven't been doing a ton of filming. Um, I got a bit of a cold, so that slowed me down a bit. And a lot of resting from the chaos of Cairo, enjoying the convenience of Dubai. But now we're out. <laughs> Here. We are headed out. 
Like all my friends who turned 30, they made it seem like it was just like the worst thing ever. They're like, oh, it's like when I really questioned my life and my choices and my age and my body, da da da. And I was like, B, I've been questioning those things my whole life. <laughs> you know, like I, I've been thinking about that my whole life. Like if anything, like 30 to me feels like a release of that. And a release of my 20s. Like, I think 20s is just this, like, trying to figure it out and trying to create this person. And then you realize that you are that person. You always were. And it's like the relaxing into that that's perfect. I don't know. Like, I'm like, I feel bliss when I think about being 30, not fear. And, and when it comes to aging, like, my relationship with aging now is just like so pure. And I think that there's a global consciousness changing now, too. I heard a really interesting thing on TikTok where it's like, when the wave of like anorexia in media was like so prevalent and like I grew up with that I was born in 1992 that was like the norm is to be a size zero and you wanted to be a size zero and then now it's like women aren't allowed to age right so women rebelled against the dominator culture saying we couldn't take up space with anorexia and now against we couldn't take up time kind of the final cycles for women and the feminine and the masculine balancing out where women are allowed to take up space and women are allowed to take up time and we can still be just as desired and celebrated and appreciated in this society and in this global world and i think that we're kind of the generation that like our generations before us have like pushed that but we're the one that really gets to own it now because of them so part of any of the conversations and interests that I have, check out my socials, it's Kitty Plays across everything. And I also have a Discord uh, where we discuss this type of stuff. Don't forget to subscribe, spank that thumbs up and leave me a comment down below. Anytime you interact and engage with my videos, it really helps the channel. I love you, I'll see you in the next video.